Hey guys, this is our first flipped video for uh, Chapter 5, The American Revolution, uh, for the period 1763 to 1783, and the uh, purpose is to try to help you out for your test, and I'm going to try to do this for every chapter we have um, for the rest of this year. So uh, this picture right here, we have an early draft of Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, which we will be working on in class. All right, so the crisis begins, um, as we've talked about before in the French and Indian War. Uh, Britain's victory over France, um, also known as the Seven Years' War, is going to lead to a huge change in British colonial policy. So now we're going to see uh, taxing of the colonies um, in order to pay off the significant debts that the British incurred from this war. And they felt justified since they, they helped the colonies uh, rid themselves of the French and also the, some of the Native Americans that were fighting against them. And they felt it was only fair. Well, we helped you out. Uh, now we have to... Uh, collect some taxes to pay off their debts. Uh, but the American colonists believed this was an infringement on their liberties. Um, and, and we're going to hear the battle cry, no taxation without representation in the, uh, in the decade to follow. So it really took off uh, upon the passing of the Stamp Act, um, which is going to affect nearly all of the colonists. So any, um, any document that, um, that was being transported or from, from colonist to colonist uh, had to affix a stamp to it and this is going to impact their day-to-day -day lives. Um, so we see some images of the effect of the Stamp Act. Uh, the image to the left is a, uh, is a warning um, to people that are trying to, uh, to collect the taxes and also here on the right we have a, uh, a teapot, no Stamp Act, just to show you how it was a part of all day-to-day -day life band is playing music is throwing me off here. That's my lunch break. All right, so crisis begins again. We have a mock funeral um, of a British uh, tax collector. You can see the crowd is, is holding this person in effigy. Um, and it just goes to show you the, uh, the tremendous anger and, and hatred that is going to be apparent. Uh, the Townshend crisis. Uh, Britain is going to impose new taxes on, on trade. Um, so any goods that were imported into the colonies had a tax on them. And uh, the American colonists said they would not object to the taxes on the trade, um, but we're going to see a colonial boycott of British goods that results. So a boycott is when uh, people refuse to buy or use a product, and uh, they're going to do this to try to undermine the British. March 5th, 1770 is an incident known as the Boston Massacre. Uh, five Bostonians were killed. Um, John Adams is going to defend the British soldiers, and um, even though the British soldiers fired in, into the crowd and, and killed these American uh, colonists, um, it was in self-defense. The American colonists instigated the, the attack, and, and even though John Adams was an American patriot, uh, he believed in that everybody deserves a, a fair trial, even if it's you know, the potential enemy that the British were. Uh, Paul Revere and, and other colonists are going to circulate inaccurate propaganda depicting that this was a, indeed a massacre, and they're trying to you know, incite a rebellion. They want to overthrow the British and, and gain their freedom. So a repeal of all the Townshend duties is going to result, except for the tax on tea, if you know anything about England, they love their tea over there, and so do the American colonists. Uh, the British also agreed to remove their troops from Boston, and American merchants agreed to stop boycotting. Uh, here is uh, Paul Revere's famous engraving of the Boston Massacre, and the way the picture is portrayed, it really does look like a massacre. These, these poor, innocent American colonists, you know, unarmed, defenseless, not doing anything wrong, that's, that's the idea here. Um, so again, this is propaganda. This is a biased opinion. The Tea Act. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Boston Tea Party. Uh, you learned that at a young age. Uh, Britain sought to protect their East India Company. So they're going to pass the Tea Act, which forced the colonists to, to buy this tea. And it was low-priced tea, which is going to undercut uh, competitors. And, and the colonists really didn't like this tea. They thought it was an inferior product. Um, and the colonists are going to argue that a tax on tea would acknowledge that Britain has a right to tax them, and they felt they should be part of the process. Again, back to no taxation without representation. 
uh, in response to the Boston Tea Party, in which you know, in today's money over a million dollars worth of tea is tossed into the ocean, um, you know, the British were upset. They're going to close Boston Harbor. Uh, they're going to force colonists to house British soldiers. That's known as the Quartering Act. They're also going to pass the Quebec Act, which the colonists didn't like because they thought that um, you know, more Catholics would have rights, and most of the colonists were, were Protestants. So we're going to see this coming of independence. We're, we're getting closer and closer and closer towards an independence uh, from the British. Uh, the Continental Congress is going to be formed, and 12 of the 13 colonies will send representatives. Georgia, maybe it was too far for them, but nobody came from Georgia. Uh, John Adams and Samuel Adams of Massachusetts. Uh, Washington and Patrick Henry from Virginia. Uh, we know Patrick Henry's very famous saying, give me liberty or give me death. All right, so we're gonna see um, all trade is virtually halted with Britain in the West Indies, and this is going to authorize committees of safety to enforce the policies. Uh, Americans believe that their liberty was based on natural rights and universal freedom. They did not see eye to eye with the British ways anymore. So war breaks out, April 19th, 1775. A shot heard around the world, uh, Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts. And um, so this is the fight for independence. But not everybody was, was on board with separating from the British. We're going to have a huge percentage of, of Americans that remained loyal to the British that will continue to fight um, on the side of the British. And of course, we have the Patriots who are going to be fighting for a new country. Uh, everybody knows Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence in the summer of 76, but Thomas Paine, uh, even earlier, is going to um, uh, appeal to the masses with his, with his pamphlet, Common Sense, you know, the idea that only a democratic system based on frequent elections with a written constitution uh, guarantees liberty for all. All right, so Paine's impact is going to be huge um, it's going to be widespread. His pamphlet's going to be, I think, 150,000 copies were sold uh, the first few months. And he's going to use any profits from, from the selling of, of common sense to fund the, the army of the, uh, of the Americans, because now the war is, is, is on. It started in 75, and it's going to continue until 1783. There is Thomas Paine right there, and we can see common sense to the right. Uh, as you should be aware, Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence will be adopted by Congress on July 4th, 76. And a um, very famous quote, all men are created equal, they are endowed with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. And this is the Enlightenment. Uh, his ideas of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness comes from John Locke, who said life, liberty, and property. So a slight change to it, but the same main idea. And Jefferson's uh, Declaration of Independence will lead to uh, dozens of countries around the globe declaring independence as well. Some will be successful, others were not. So America will become a symbol of freedom and a model for the rest of the world. Because at this time, there are no true democratic countries. America is striving to become the first. So the first years of the war, uh, Washington was smart. He, he knew his inferior army. Uh, could be destroyed with direct confrontation. So the Americans are going to adopt guerrilla warfare tactics. They're going to, to do hit and run. They're going to do whatever it takes to inflict damage on the British, but not engage them directly head to head. Uh, turning point of the Revolutionary War was the Battle of Saratoga. The uh, British had designs to surround the American army, but luckily for the Americans, uh, one of the British generals, instead of going north, General Howe, went south into Philadelphia. And by winning this battle, it is a turning point because the French will jump in on the side of the Americans. And the French obviously aren't too happy with the, with the British after the, uh, the Seven Years' War. Um, this is an entry of the royal troops into New York. They are going to capture New York City, the British will. Um, here is a, a map of the Revolutionary War fought in the north. And eventually, the British are going to take the war down south as well. Uh, the British hope to take advantage of social tensions down there, uh, to encourage slaves to escape, to enlist on their side, to also uh, gather up any loyalists and, and have them on their side. 
But the Battle of Yorktown, the, the last major battle of the war, the Americans and the French will defeat the British. And in 1783, America becomes the first independent nation in the hemisphere. Um, here is a French engraving showing the surrender of uh, British Lord uh, Cornwallis surrendering to the Americans, and that brought an end to the war. And here is the new United States. Um, they're going to have land from the Mississippi River to the East Coast, um, south of Canada. So uh, this was a successful revolution, and this will conclude the end of Chapter 5 flipped video. I hope this was helpful to you.